Welcome to this short tutorial on depth of field effects in Houdini. I've got a simple scene here, which I've set up already. Uh, there's a grid, there's our floor plane, we've got a row of spheres, uh, I've got a distant light to illuminate the scene, and I've got a camera, uh, which is showing the row of spheres also set up a couple of materials. I've got a clay material on the spheres, checkerboard material on the ground. Now, to make this example a bit clearer, I want to add a colour to each sphere that's different. I'm going to do that using a primitive SOP. What a primitive SOP allows me to do on the Attributes tab here is add colour. Let's enlarge this so I can see it a bit better. And I want to add a colour which is different for each sphere primitive. Fortunately, there's a fairly easy way to do this, which is to use a random colour. The function rand creates a random number between 0 and 1, but it creates the number in a deterministic fashion based on the value you give it as its parameter. So if I give it $PR, which is the primitive number, then for each primitive it will create a different colour. And do the same for the green component. But we don't want dollar $PR because that would give the same value for green and red, so we just add anything to it to make it a different number. And then finally the same for the blue component. So we've got three uh, different random numbers, and we've indeed got a random colour. We can see the values. And if we look back at our scene, each of these spheres has a different colour. So we can see uh, what that's like when it's rendered. So I'll lay down a mantra node, and then we'll render the scene. Well, we've got our different colours, but no depth of field as yet. Why does it work, uh, the, the colouring of the spheres? Well, just a quick digression to explain that. On our clay shader here, we've got an option, Use Point Colour, which is selected. So, the shader is looking for attributes on the points of the primitives that are being shaded, and it's looking for a colour attribute. Let's have a look at our uh, sphere, sphere objects, and I've got, if I put up a details view here, um, that allows us to see the attributes that are on the points and uh, so on of this, of this object. So here we are at the point level, and we can see that and then we've got position information, we don't have any colour. If we go up to the primitive level, we do have a have colour. Uh, that's what this CD attribute is, CD1, CD00, CD1, and CD2 are the red, green, and blue components of colour, and we added those using this primitive SOP. So how then does the shader find uh, this at the primitive level when it's looking at the point level? The answer is that if it doesn't find it at the point level, it then looks for a vertex attribute, and then a primitive attribute, and finally a detail attribute. So even though we don't have colour at the point level, it's successfully finding those attributes at the primitive level. So enabling depth of field is a two-step process. First step, we need to select our camera and move the view round so that we can see it make sure that the select handle is selected. Use a different handle to start with, uh, which we can find by right clicking on the camera. You can see we're given a choice of three handles, the orientation handle, which is the one we're showing at the moment, the focus handle and the frostrum handle. I'm not going to worry about the frostrum handle in this lesson the focus handle displayed here. Uh, it's not that easy to see, but what we've essentially got 
is a manipulator here which allows us to position the centre of interest of the camera, a manipulator here that allows us to position the camera itself, and two rotation manipulators. This one rotates the centre of interest around the camera, and this one rotates the camera around the centre of interest. Now, the effect I want to achieve is to make this light brown sphere in focus and the other spheres more or less out of focus. So the first step is to move the centre of interest of the camera so that it is focused on that sphere there. So if I move the handle, there we are, that's more or less focused on the sphere. Next step is to select the focus handle, which we can do by right clicking on the camera or by using the Z key. What this produces is a line from the camera through the centre of interest and out to infinity. There are two arrows on this line which show you what is going to be in focus. Uh, in fact, we can only see one of the arrows at the moment, the other one is weighed off, off at the end of this line. But we can tell already that all of these spheres are in fact going to be in focus. It's not what we want, we want quite a sharp focus on the light brown sphere. So if we move this handle down, we can now see the other handle here. So we've got two handles, and that shows that more or less just that sphere will be in focus. Let's render that and see what we get. Well, we're still getting all of the spheres in focus. And the reason for that is that the second step that you need to do to enable depth of field is to set some properties on your mantra node. The properties tab, under samples, you need to enable depth of field also may want to up the number of pixel samples to get a slightly smoother effect. So let's render it again. And we can already see that we're getting a nice sharp focus on this light brown sphere. And the spheres either side are out of focus. So that's how to set up a depth of field effect in Houdini.